I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we're going to take a quick look at the bias trem feature of the amp block on the FM9 and the Axe FX3. If you're following along on an FM3, there is a bias trem type in the tremolo block of all fractal products. There's also other types like the awesome sounding harmonic and optical tremolo as well. But for now, I want to focus on the bias trem in the amp block because this is the way that a lot of vintage valve or tube amplifiers created a tremolo effect by actually modulating the bias to the power tubes. I think that's a pretty cool feature and it is emulated in the Axe FX3 amp block. First, I'm going to go with the nuclear tone amp type. This is based on the Swart Atomic Space Tone. Uh, amplifier that is renowned for its lovely sounding bias trem. In fact, I've played one of those amps in the real world and the person who owned it basically said, just put the tremolo on and leave it on. And I do remember that amp sounding absolutely awesome. So we'll go nuclear tone and we'll just roll with this factory York audio impulse response. I've set the preamp low cut and high cut at 80 Hertz and 8K respectively. This is a great sounding chimey edge of breakup amp. Let's start on the neck pickup of my old Strat. So I love the way that amp sounds, especially with that cabinet in there. It plays pretty nicely with just about any cab IR you want to throw it at. Let's just leave it at the stock settings and let's immediately make this sound a little prettier. We'll go to the power tubes plus cathode follower page. The bottom left, you've got bias tremolo. I'm going to turn the frequency down a little bit and bring the depth up to about 70%. Check this out. Now you would notice as I start playing harder and really digging in, the effect gets a little less pronounced. And then when I play quite softly or I clean everything up, the effect is more pronounced, which I think is really cool. It's a unique feature of a biased tremolo in there. Basically, if you think of a real world amp as you're really pushing the power section in the amp, it becomes a little bit harder to actually modulate that bias of the power tubes because they're working so hard. So I really like that. Now, as with any effect, I would encourage you to try push it to the extreme. So let's go depth at 100% and let's try a really low frequency on there and just have a listen to what this gives us. I'm actually going to add a reverb just after we do all of this. We'll get to that in a second. Let's hear what we've got here. Really high depth, really low frequency. <laughs> Now, I really like this with the deluxe spring reverb in front of the amp. So your reverb is going to be hitting the amp, which is a little bit gritty, and then you're going to get that trim on the reverb trails. This is great if you want that kind of like, you know, late 50s, early 60s spaghetti western guitar tone, or you want a kind of surf style guitar tone as well. I've got the trim with the frequency just below 4 hertz and the depth at around 80%. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now let's just say I'm going for a more traditional rock sort of sound. I've got the Canon CCV2A and I just want to enable and disable that built-in bias trim. I don't want to use a trim block and take up a space on the grid. How would I go about activating it? First, I'll let you hear this Cameron CCV2A. I think it's a great sounding rock app. <laughs> got a little bit of London plate reverb back there and I'm actually using my good old LTTV Mix 7 for anybody who's curious. Okay, let's go to this trem. Let's say I want a bias trem with a frequency you know, around 3 hertz, but I want to bring the depth up from zero. I'm going to use a control switch here. So let's right click this and let's use control switch number one over here. So we're going to have it so that with the control switch off, the depth is at a minimum, but then I'm going to have the max at say around 90%. So I just turn this parameter here down a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do, I am on the scenes layout at the moment. Let's say this is just a very particular preset where I want to add a switch to turn the bias trim on and off. What we'll do is we'll go to FC per preset. I'm going to use per preset number one over here, and I'm going to use control switch number one, of course. I'm going to make it a latching switch so that when I turn it on, it stays on. And if I wanted to, I could give it a custom name down here. All I'll do, though, is I'll go to FC Edit, and I am going to overwrite on my scenes page, say, this button up here that takes me to presets. I'm going to hit that down here. I'm going to go per preset number one, and that control switch is now mapped there. So what's really cool is when I press that control switch, the depth controller is going to come up to the value that I preset. I can actually control how fast that happens as well, again, by right clicking the modifier and changing the damping. I'll just leave it where it is for now, but let's just confirm that this actually works. <laughs> Alternatively, you could attach that to an expression pedal and swell it in and out and control the depth. That way, if you're on an FM9 or an Axe FX3, this is a really fun effect to play around with. I like that tremolo is one of those effects, kind of like reverb, delay, and distortion, where you hear it in just about every genre of music. And it has been something that has really been there since the birth of rock and roll. Try out these tips. Let me know any questions in the comments, and I will see you all next Tuesday for another Tuesday Tone Tip. Take it easy.